this video uh, is an overview of political economy in the global north, uh, which can really be summarized by saying Keynes versus Hayek. So these are, are two prominent economists, uh, both Nobel laureates, whose ideas about how to um, how the state should relate to the economy uh, have been the two primary uh, the, the the poles around which political contest has has uh, taken place over the past 70 years or so. These economists were very, very active in the 30s and 40s. Let's go over the. I've made a chart here, historical chart, showing how these different ideas have risen and fallen, and particularly to bring out how the changes in what has been seen as economic common sense is tied to particular moments in time, particular moments of crisis. So uh, when a crisis occurs, old ideas are discounted, delegitimized, no longer considered valid, and that's the moment in time when new ideas can rise, proposals and suggestions that previously seemed uh, unthinkable or unreasonable become more accepted and adopted by governments who are uh, looking for new solutions when the old solutions they had uh, no longer seem to be working. So we go here from the early 18, 1900s uh, all the way up to today. Uh, and of course, the early 1900s was an era of classic liberalism in the sense that this was the pre-welfare pre state, uh, governments less regulated, uh, you wouldn't have a, a large measure of social uh, insurance systems, and a, a comparatively small state. And that was the common sense for the state, uh, uh, really for, for quite a while, the, this common sense becomes increasingly challenged first with the First World War, but certainly with the 1930s and the Great Depression, which was definitely a crisis. So that's the first moment in time here, the crisis with the Great Depression, when an old paradigm of thought, an old common sense for what the state should be doing in relation to the economy uh, is really challenged in a fundamental way and effectively collapses. And that's where new ideas uh, gain traction and new ideas are adopted by governments who, who need to, to find a solution to this great uh, uh, social problem. That brings us to the post-war era and what uh, was the Keynesian consensus. John Maynard Keynes' ideas about what the state should be doing uh, were uh, accepted as common sense for economic management by governments uh, all over the global north. This had as an effect an expansion of the welfare state. The, there was deficit spending according to Keynesian principles to spend when there was an economic downturn to, to stimulate the economy. Uh, there was protectionism in an effort to protect the local economies and local industries and, and protect in jobs uh, for workers in, in the political community, the country. And these are some examples of these measures. The, the New Deal, Great Society, and the Beverage Report, of course, in the United Kingdom. Uh, all of these inspired by um, uh, Keynesian ideas and in line with this uh, mainstream, th this was really mainstream uh, economic thought. And this is, uh, of course, also the interventionist state. This with, with basic health care and education, subsidized or, or free education at all levels, unemployment and compensation, pension programs for seniors, and, and so and, and this idea that the market cannot effectively provide the public goods, this idea being the rationale for all these social uh, programs. So this is the time when a Global North uh, government Governments engage in these types of activities and institute these, and, and you can see that in Canada, the U.S., uh, just about all global North countries uh, does this at the same time. But then we come to the new crisis, the 1970s and stagflation, the oil shock, and so on. So you had a, a situation that was unprecedented and not predicted by the old economic theories. The old methods no longer worked. Uh, a great deal of, of economic crisis, unemployment and inflation at the same time. Now what? So 
In response to that, we get to uh, the 1980s and uh, laissez-faire ideas. So this is what critics of these ideas call neoliberalism. Uh, laissez-faire ideas, the, in, in other words, retreating the state. These are the, so this would be uh, Hayek and, and Milton Friedman uh, and um, these types of, of the, the Austrian School of Economics and the Chicago School of Economics. The ideas from these uh, schools of economic, uh, in, in, these economic schools becoming mainstream and accepted as common sense and adopted by governments all over the global north. So we, we see a definite change in paradigm here from the Keynesian post-war consensus era to an era of laissez-faire ideas uh, that uh, governments and politicians uh, who engage in this type of common sense uh, will express uh, when talking about uh, economy. And, and what the state should be doing. So this is the, the time when, when we see these, these trends with the retreat of the state, where deficits suddenly become uh, a bad word. Uh, no state should, should ever, ever engage in deficits. We see uh, governments talk much more about free trade solutions, free, free trade regimes. We see uh, privatization going on of, of uh, public companies and public property and, and old uh, government bureaucracies becoming crown corporations or simply sold as, as corporations. And, and we see a, a great deal of critique against the welfare state that was being built during the post-war era. Uh, so the critics then, uh, and those who, who would advocate laissez-faire ideas, uh, would say that, that um, runaway deficit spending is, is what has created great debt and what is a, a serious lag on the economy, that the government is paternalistic and, and traps poor people in poverty. So the welfare state program that are supposed to help the poor actually do not help the poor at all. They have completely different outcomes than the intentions were. That government is inefficient and bad at innovation. And, and they would also uh, uh, reframe the, the causes of great, the Great Depression, which during the Keynesian era was att attributed to markets being imperfect and market capitalism being imperfect. Uh, and instead, uh, according to this model of explanation, it's actually uh, the Great Depression was actually caused by, by government actions, not market failure. So it's, it's a, a completely different way of, of viewing uh, the role of the state in, in relation to uh, economy and, and uh, social programs. Now, of course, we're in the post-2008 era, and this is uh, arguably also a moment of crisis uh, that has gone on for, for quite a few years now. Uh, and if you listen to the public debate in uh, uh, any given Global North country, this is the debate that's going on. Should there be stimulus spending or should there be austerity? Uh, depending on government, this is going to vary somewhat. So uh, the Obama presidency has uh, used uh, uh, stimulus packages, but many countries in Europe have embarked on programs of austerity. And uh, as I mentioned, the, those who are critical of laissez-faire ideas, uh, they call it neoliberalism, have, of course, been, uh, been arguing quite uh, intensely that uh, this era has not lived up to its promises, that what has happened has actually been uh, so cuts in social spending, increased poverty, a squeezed middle class, and ultimately undermining democracy. That's, that's the critique against, against this type of economic policy. And who will win out between uh, Keynes and Hayek? Well, I guess we'll have to see that with the benefit of hindsight. So this was an overview of political economy, e economy in the global north and how uh, these paradigmatic shifts have occurred between different types of, of economic common sense in politics. I hope you found that useful.